culture, we're going to talk about using the cheeseburger. <clears throat> and you need to understand that agriculture touches your life every day, even though you don't realize it. Now, the hamburger. Did you know that this hamburger was created in Germany around a town called Hamburg? Hmm, go figure, right? Hamburg, Germany. The first hamburger was served in the United States at the St. Louis World's Fair a very long time ago. We know hamburgers, along with pizza, right, are one of the most favorite meals of people in the United States. Is there anything else that you think is your favorite meal? Spaghetti? Pulled pork? Steak. There's my man right there. Steak. Okay, there's a lot of different things. But there's nothing like the good old standalone cheeseburger, right? Do you realize that from conception to consumption of a cheeseburger, producing that single cheeseburger takes thousands of people in the production chain? It's not just the one person who took your order and the one person who cooked the patty and the other person who put it together and wrapped it in a piece of paper for you and then handed it to you. It's thousands of people. And that's what I want to talk about is everybody that's involved in that. So here's a picture of a cheeseburger up here. And we have all the component parts of it. We have the bun, of course, the pickles, the onions, tomatoes, <coughs> the cheese, of course, the hamburger itself, the lettuce, and don't forget the ketchup, the, and the mustard, and the mayo. Who's my ketchup people? Ha! Ah, who's my mustard people? Who's the mayonnaise people? Ooh, somebody says ooh. How, who's my all three people? Anybody like all three? A, a few. I like all three. Okay. To make that entire gorgeous, luscious, juicy, mouth-watering cheeseburger, it takes people to help that are directly involved in the production of that. Remember the conception to consumption part? So it's grown by people directly involved in the agriculture industry. It involves people indirectly involved, such as scientists, engineers, processors, manufacturers, and retailers, all right? Now, before you take that first most awesome bite of this cheeseburger, we need to talk about the bun. And I'm gonna disassemble this cheeseburger and I may need some help here soon, reassembling it. See, here's my pickles. I even have pickles up here. Here's my onion, I've got onion. Lettuce, we got lettuce. Tomato, we didn't talk about tomato. Who likes tomatoes? Anybody? And our cheese, now this is white, don't hold it against me, but it's cheese. And we have that patty that we're gonna talk about here in a minute. But let's talk about this bun. Big bun. Now, when we talk about bread, we have different types of bread. Who's my wheat, whole wheat bread eaters in here? Anybody? Okay, who's my white bread eaters? More white bread than wheat bread, okay? It varies. <coughs> At my house we eat wheat, it's just what I buy, you know. <coughs> when we make this bun, this bun was made by a baker. And if you look on my bun, I even have the sesame seeds. See, right here, isn't that awesome? My mom made this cheeseburger for me. She thought I was crazy when I asked her to make it, but it's really handy, and it's, it's homemade. It's a great project to do. <coughs> that bun was made by a baker. Before that baker could bake this bread, he had to get flour. You guys go buy flour at the grocery store. Mom buys flours, right? Flour was milled or processed into flour by a miller. <coughs> Prior to that, the wheat, which we have wheat seed samples, we're going to pass out, pass them out, walk through, <coughs> take a picture. Go ahead, pass them out, split them between tables. These are examples of wheat seed. <coughs> the seed was clean, stored, and sold <coughs> to a processor. Prior to that, it was hauled by truck, rail, barge, or terminal. 
It was sold to an elevator close to the field for which it grew. In that field, a farmer operated a combine to harvest that wheat. But before that, he had to plant that field. So he had to buy the seed from a marketer. That marketer had to get that particular strain of wheat from a scientist in a laboratory. That scientist worked with a geneticist to determine what specific traits that wheat seed was gonna have. Maybe it was gonna be drought resistant. Maybe it was gonna have more protein. Maybe it was gonna um, be disease resistant. So there's all sorts of things that went into that little tiny seed before that seed turned into this bun. Are you following along? Are you with me? This means yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so that was the bun. Next step, what's the next most awesome part of a cheeseburger? The beef patty, right? All beef patty. How do you like your, your hamburgers cooked? You like them well done? You like them medium well done? What do you think? Rare. Oh, steaks are made to be rare. Burgers are not made to be rare. The reason is it's called E. coli, okay? That's why we have to cook them. 140 degrees is what you have to cook. Any product that is ground has to be cooked to 140 degrees so it would be well, okay? Steaks are not ground. That's why we can get away with eating them rare. And I agree, I like a medium rare steak myself. Now, that beef patty, it only takes you a few minutes to roll up to a store or a drive-thru and to buy a cheeseburger. A few minutes. No, nothing, you know, not much time at all. But to get that burger, and especially that hamburger patty, from conception to your consumption takes two and a half years. Did you realize it takes that long for us to get that hamburger ready for you to eat? <clears throat> that two and a half years to produce one 1,200 pound steer or heifer, an animal, <clears throat> to be ready for your consumption. Now, of course the important parts of a burger is that ground beef patty that's juicy, that tastes great, and also that cheese, can't forget about our cheese, because cheese also comes from animals, comes from milk. We're gonna talk more about that here in a minute. I'm used to having a touch screen in my classroom, can't you tell, I kinda of get a little lost. Now, when we talk about the meat and the milk component of that cheeseburger, we know dairy cows give us milk, that's their primary function. We also know that beef cows, we use those to provide us with the meat or the hamburger. Farmers and ranchers raise cattle to give us milk. Others of them give us meat. I have some pictures up there. Producing cattle involves a lot of people, such as veterinarians, to help us keep them healthy. Nutritionists, to tell us what we need to feed them to keep them growing. <coughs> feed and drug salesmen, to supply us with the grain and the, and the feed that we need. People that help us with reproduction to get our cows bred so they have babies. <clears throat> we also have specialists, extension agents. We need bankers. Who would have thought a banker would have anything to do with agriculture? A banker loans me money so I can buy my cows, okay? Helps me money to buy my bulls. But in the same token, he also I also give him his money back because it's a loan. Also equipment dealers. I have to have equipment on my farm or ranch to help raise my cows. I gotta have some piece of equipment to help put out hay. So they are important. See why I said there's thousands of people involved in this? Now, once we harvest our animals, we also have to have people to help inspect the products. Also lab technicians to run the test to make sure it is healthy for us. People, those that are employed by the government, they inspect those animals. They inspect the animals, the milk, the meat, even the facility that we harvest them in to make sure the products are safe. Then after that, we have processors who help cut up and process those carcasses and process the milk, turn it into cheese, and then of course they have to package it and sell it to retailers. Next time you enjoy that double cheeseburger or Whopper or Big Mac, I want you to think about all those people we talked about today and how 
and many people it takes in agriculture.